Cast. Right, so we decided to do our own podcast. Um, we thought it'd be fun to start to, you know, since we're such a small studio, we come from a big studio, we're a small studio, and you know, I think we do miss a bit of, we do, we miss, we miss people, and um, it's a great excuse for us to get together with friends and meet new friends and meet people we respect in the industry. Um, so we decided to do this uh, podcast, which I'm super excited about our I think in general, right, like you and I like talking, like especially you.、Uh, you talk a lot. Like we're so passionate about animation and film and the community, what's happening in industry. And I think it's the idea is like we share that passion,、mm-hmm. with all the stuff that we talk about all the time. You talk all the time.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first, <laughs> first one,、yeah. who did we invite? Right, so timing actually was super coincidental.、Mm. Um, but on the day of the Academy nominations being announced, we happened to invite Ronnie Del Carmen.、Uh, and Ronnie Del Carmen, in case you don't know, if you don't know, is,、uh, well, most recently the co director of Inside Out. Right. But Ronnie has an amazing history in the animation industry. He's, I think it's fair to say he's. One of the best storytellers in the business, right? Like, we, I think anyone who knows Ronnie says the same thing. I think he is one of the best storytellers.、Mm-hmm. Um, he came up with a lot of the greatest moments in animation history, like the moment the in married, up, life. married life in Up. <laughs>、um, and of course, you know, Inside Out, he was one of the writers and one of the directors, one of the、uh, co directors of the film. You and Ronnie have quite, I mean, Ronnie I met when I started at Pixar, but you and Ronnie have done quite a few things together. So, yeah, we, you know, outside of Pixar, like we did a couple of projects together.、Mm-hmm. One is the Total Forest Project, this、right. big charity auction event I did with Enrico Casarosa and Ronnie Del Kerman. And also, Sketch Travel, you know, Ronnie was one important aspect of the project,、uh, especially after we built the library in. Cambodia and Sri Lanka and all the other countries in, e- in Asia, we actually went to visit. Ronnie and I went to visit the libraries and met those kids who benefited from the libraries. And also, we did this training workshop of the children's book illustrators in Cambodia and Sri Lanka. So, you know, we, I spent a lot of time together with Ronnie, and he's just such a charisma, like, he has this charisma, and he just brings people together, and he's such a storyteller. and... It's a really interesting guy. So here's our podcast from Ronnie Del, with Dar- Ronnie Del Carmen on the morning that he had just found out he was nominated. We were actually, fortunately, the first people、uh, to really get to interview him after his nomination.、Mm-hmm. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Start any time. Great. All right, just roll them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, today is、uh, January 14th, 2016, and this morning, We had this great news that your movie, Inside Out, got nominated for the Oscar. s Yeah. It was so early in the morning. It was <laughs> 5 30 in the morning. Were you up? Were you sleeping? No, I kind of woke up. I don't know what it was. Something nudged me when I was、mm. asleep. I was like,、mm. you, you didn't try to meet with Pete? And,、uh, no, we, we didn't talk about it. And、yeah. I kind of like woke up without knowing it. And then I'm thinking, like, what time is it? And then I realized that, wait, wasn't something happening with that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it on, so I, so I had to hear it. That was great. It was wonderful. Super exciting. I got really nervous. You did? I got really nervous just when the category was being announced. I got like my heart started racing.、Mm. What's going on? What, what, what's up? Why am I doing this? So,、I、you were watching, so they did the same thing as last year. They, no, they no, no, there's a, there's a streaming yeah. Yeah. thing online. I just, I just typed it in. I was like,、yeah. oh. And then I got really nervous. It just made me feel like. Nervous, nervous. nervous about what? I have no idea. Oh,、uh, yeah? It was totally out of the blue. I just felt like, why am I nervous? My life will change one way or the other. But I'm, I'm happy it went our way.、Mm-hmm. We got nominated for Best Animated. Feature and I, along with our friends、uh, Pete Doctor, Josh Cooley, Meg l a f a g u and myself, got nominated for Best Original Screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
awesome. Yeah. So, hey, the congratulations. Thank you. Well Thank you. And I'm glad that we all got to meet just to congratulate me because. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is really. That's not exactly why you guys. You didn't ask me over for that. Although it, the timing is really good. Timing was amazing. amazing. And I, this is actually your official press. Uh, interview after the nomination. This is the first one. Oh yeah. From yeah. this morning at five thirty, this is actually a sanctioned Pixar podcast. That's All awesome. right. Sanctioned. Yeah. Tunko House. Yay. Well, so how did you feel, Ronnie? After so you were nervous leading up to it. I was no, no, no. It was just as soon as they started to announce it because there are other categories uh, yeah. that they have to announce, mm. and I was really kind of chill because I was in my bed. That was like nice and comfy, you know. I was just watching on a laptop. And then all of a sudden, as they've started to say, for uh, best animated feature, I started getting... And then after that, I had to wait for the next round of, mm -hmm. of nominations, which another... Uh, oh, the screenplay came after? Uh, um, yeah, first, anim mm -hmm. uh, first it was animated feature, and I felt mm -hmm. like, yeah, that was pretty good, I'm glad. But when it came time to, to reading out the... Uh, Best uh, original screenplay nominees. Then my heart really went, and I'm thinking, what's going on? I better not have a heart attack. <laughs> did you actually have a feeling, or did you guys talk at Pixar that the categories that most likely you guys would be nominated would be those two, or what? what no, we, there were a couple of categories. One of them would be a uh, best picture. Yeah. yeah. So sure. uh, there were a number of scenarios that they were talking about. I try not to listen to it because mm. it's just kind of like monkeys mm. with my yeah. brain. But um, once the uh, once that option for um, uh, best animated screenplay was always being bandied about, as if like this might actually come up, this might actually mm. come up, I started no, no, I don't want to think about it. But that was that was one of those things that we had a good shot at it. Mm. Let's just say, and it it showed up as a nomination. It's amazing. Yeah, congratulations. Thank Good you. Yeah, Thank that's you. Awesome. I was, I'm very happy. It's really interesting uh, the, the Oscar category. I don't know if you had a chance to check out all the other feature animated features, but I think if I'm not mistaken, outside of Inside Out, all the other nominees are either independent or foreign animated films, which I think, so. I think it must be the first time that the Oscar feature film <coughs> nominations just so much focused on, uh, you know, yeah. indie. Yes, like a, it's a diverse a pool. Yeah. Yes, I'm which so, is really exciting. I'm so excited about that yeah. because it seems like in our own category that there's a lot of diversity mm -hmm. the very powerful uh movies that are out there that are being made independently which gives you know a, a lot of us hope that you know um there are major statements and points of views that can be expressed in animation that's not just about you know trying to release a blockbuster movie mm -hmm. it, it's always going to be part of our our roster of, of things to choose from mm -hmm. but the animation offerings are getting more varied. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, Inside Out, uh, despite the fact that it's a big studio, blockbuster success, uh, it's a very different, it's unlike any other, you know, US, you know, big budget mm -hmm. movies. You, mm -hmm. Inside Out is already like a very kind of a unique kind of storytelling. It is. Uh, I, I, we, when we were making it, we were always wondering if we were trying something that might be challenging the limits of what you can actually make in a mm -hmm. summer animated feature release mm -hmm. because it was very high concept. It felt like it was not only going to be challenging, but the audiences to actually kind of stick with you. Mm -hmm. We were wondering if they will just feel like, this is too strange. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what's happening. So we had a lot of work ahead of us and, and thankfully, we succeeded enough that the audiences came to watch the movie and appreciate it. And that uh, we believe that, at least from all the people I've spoken to, even people who are experts in the um, human mind and mm. emotions, mm. we've gotten an award from the uh, Columbia University uh, Global Mental Health Program wow. and the World Health Organization oh, wow. Serious? for having made um, um, Inside Out because they tell us, these are the professionals, yeah, yeah, these are the scientists, yeah, yeah. they actually have their own language set. They're talking in English, and yet I have no idea what they're talking about. 
but they're very generous. And when they talk about the impact of this movie, they actually want to. You have no idea what you've just done. Mm. You have no idea how much you've helped our wow. cause. Our cause is we want to talk to the rest of the planet about mental health. Mm. And yet, they have a hard time actually even starting the conversation. Right. And Inside Out has this byproduct of making that conversation easier for mm. their industry, their mm. profession, mm -hmm. so that people can actually have something that they can reference when they want to talk about, Emotions. this is how I'm feeling, yeah. Yeah. or this is what I'm going through. It's, it's just, and not being the goal of the movie from the beginning, it feels like as a byproduct, it made you feel like, Wait, this is the one movie that actually seems to be helping people mm -hmm. in a very real way. Mm -hmm. So that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I know. I'm so glad to be part that's of it. I'm so cool. Lucky to one win that lottery. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it, that's what's so amazing. You know, us both being from Pixar as oh, well, yeah. knowing how much time and effort goes into research and mm -hmm. kind of portraying things not just for the masses but for people who are in the industry of mm -hmm. how the mind works and all that sort of thing yeah. um, did you guys do any like trips or no this is the like one that? this is the one production like other productions where you feel like you feel like I'm gonna go and do research actually it was just like FaceTime or <laughs> Skype <laughs> people in rooms people in rooms look at us we're yeah. in a room and we're gonna be talking to people who are got it Psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, wow. and yeah. all the time, and that's we're trying to understand each other. You did go to uh, Saturday Night Live. We went to Saturday Night Live yeah. uh, to understand their writing and creating process. Oh, that's what it was. Yes. Oh, cool. Well, because we had Bill Hader, yeah. who was who was very generous in not only inviting us but being a great partner in creating some of these early versions of these characters. We were very curious of how they actually um, write. The culture of writing in, in, in uh, SNL, and by extension writing for TVs, uh, for sketch comedy, and then learning from uh, some of our cast members like Mindy Kaling and, and Amy Poehler, they, they write for series TV. Mm -hmm. And we learned a lot about how the writing process is for these various projects. And it's always amazing that we have a lot in common mm -hmm. with them as, as creators and writers. Mm -hmm. Our timetables are different, so it kind of forces you to actually do something a little different in terms of when you have to have the output. But the actual kind of interaction mm -hmm. in our story rooms is the same. Mm. It's kind of it's the same animal. There, there, there are different kind of specialities where they actually become more specific. But that was really encouraging that yeah. the the writing process that they, that we have at, at Pixar and in these other um, studios and other groups w was so um, inspiring. Mm. That's amazing. That's yeah. Awesome. Well, the Inside Out being your first feature film co-directing. Um, I would love to touch upon your uh, career a little bit, you know, okay. how you came, I mean, you know, Robert and I were talking earlier that uh, even before we came to Pixar, we knew of you, you know. You from my criminal record. Mostly, <laughs> mostly, mostly, mostly yeah, right? Yeah. That it's shot the with the number of Carmen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Serial killer, yeah. Um, I'm curious uh, if you could talk a little bit about that. Like you, you grew up in Philippines. Yes. Um, and then how did you come to America and how did you get into animation? I mean, you were in comic book world as well, mm -hmm. pretty well known. I don't know if you could just talk a little bit about... I mean, did your art bring you to the States? No, my, my dad had migrated to the U.S. on a long shot to um, uh, migrate to the U.S. because life was very hard in the Philippines, so he, 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 he went on a working... Uh, a working visa, and he applied for uh, to be an immigrant. And while that's happening, I was in, in the Philippines, and um, because life was hard and it was difficult to actually get into art school, I had to wait <laughs> for this money. And then I went to art school. I majored in advertising because there was no such thing as an animation industry that is reliable in the Philippines back then. It's a long time ago. Anyway, by the time I got to um, the U.S. 
I was thinking that I was going to go and do advertising work, mm. you know, art director, do comps for ads and, mm. and stuff. But uh, there were no jobs like that that I could find because the entry level for that means that you have some kind of pedigree in the advertising business here in the U.S. And I don't have that. I have pedigree from the Philippines. So my friends were saying, it's like, um, maybe you should try um, animation. It's just like, no thanks. Mm. I don't know anything about animation. Mm. Really, I know nothing about animation. In fact, I don't even want to do animation. Mm. If there's one thing I know I can't do because I don't know anything about is animation. I fell mm. into it because a friend of mine had said that you should go and try this one job at Deke, and it was Stefan Martinier, who's this amazing artist from, from France. Uh, had needed an assistant to an art director for this one show. I won't name the show. Yes, the show is Where's Waldo? <laughs> anyway, and then, and he trained me for two and a half months to be his assistant. Mm. And that's still not enough time, but then after that, I, I fell into, and lucky again, I worked on Batman, the animated series as a storyboard artist. And from there, I kind of went to DreamWorks, and from DreamWorks, I wanted to go to Pixar, but it seems like that was a long shot. Because Pixar's up here in Emeryville, I was in Los Angeles, and they may not want me. But I, they heard me. I worked on Finding Nemo, and then from then on, and, you know, I worked on various movies after that. It, was, it wasn't planned. I don't have any training in animation. I don't animate. Mm -hmm. I do storyboards and storytelling. I learned kind of on the job about storytelling. It's the thing about being in those rooms. You're in a room with Andrew, you're in a room with Pete, you're in a room with John. You learn about writing, mm -hmm. and you're, you're learning from a lot of other people. Like sometimes we have writers that are assigned to these movies, and then you learn about their cadences and their inclinations, mm -hmm. opportunities, and you adopt a lot of them, and then kind of become this person that is writing and directing and creating. Were you always interested in writing or the storytelling or before I you was, but I was never quite giving myself any kind of credit for any of it. It was yeah. kind of like, you know, it'd be nice to learn it because it, I always felt back then that you needed to be graduating from a course, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. said that you mm -hmm. are now mm -hmm. an artist, you are now a writer. And if you um, don't, then that means nobody can call mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. so, but um, because I work on these movies and then people give me these assignments that meant that I have to write, design, storyboard, and direct. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you know, you get the credit and people don't ask you anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel like, wow, I kind of backed into this mm -hmm. career without really meaning to. There was no plan. <laughs> it's, it seems crazy. Like, I think there are a lot of people, especially young people, and including people like us who are trying to be storytellers now, you mm -hmm. know, in our kind of uh, late in our career or mid, mid, mid point of our career. But, um, you know, obviously a lot of people want to get into story or storytelling uh, part of filmmaking. I'm curious how your upbringing influenced your storytelling, hmm. too. I wonder about that all the time. Um, I think. I think that I was always fascinated with movies. I loved watching them, like watching TV. I was kind of glued to the TV when I was a kid. My mom would get mad because I can't be broken from the trance. Mm. It's like, what? It was just like you watch these cartoons a thousand times. And? <laughs> Monster movies, sci-fi movies, and then reading books. Uh, so I was kind of like a full-pledged nerd. Not a sport kid. Mm. I suck at basketball. And for a Filipino, that's really bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Filipino male can't play basketball. They will want to revoke your citizenship. Because, <laughs> you know, you're an embarrassment, <laughs> frankly. Um, so I just like reading and, and, and mm. drawing for myself. And that's also because... There's no, not a lot of encouragement back then. Mm. It was a long time ago. There was nothing. You can't talk to another artist. Mm. If I walked a thousand miles around where I lived, I wouldn't bump into an art, another artist. Mm. There was no one to talk to. Mm. There was no value system to regard it. In fact, my dad was worried for me that mm, this one seems to be drawing a lot. Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? But I think that that 
part of my life that was about like wanting to read and wanting to draw uh, self motivation just didn't leave me. Mm. It, in spite of a, a lot of very discouraging signs that says I shouldn't do it. But when I got into studios, um, people would tell me that uh, I was doing something right without the instruction mm -hmm. to do it. That people would go, it's like, I really like what you did with this part of the movie. And it's like, really? What exactly did I do? Mm -hmm. I've done that with, with other directors who would tell me, it's like... Um, like sequences in a movie and I would have done it and then if they're like this is great mm. you know you're, you're doing this thing for the movie that we didn't think about it's like I didn't think twice about it I think it's like I thought what, that's what you were asking for mm. Mm. so I was mysteriously kind of accessing things that I didn't think I was after mm -hmm. so like uh, my first director was Brenda Chapman I actually had then mm. telling me this like you just did this sequence that helped the movie kind of get its focus about mm. these relationships I felt like that's great I had no idea that's what I was doing <laughs> I had no idea that's what you were asking for mm. I was trying to do this but I will try and do that more of it. Mm. so that that is the that is the learning thing about it, it it's like you need that kind of feedback yeah. from people I mean Ronnie you're work at Pixar while we were there, you know, I know, I know you for always doing that sincere moment that a film is built upon, you know, the kind of like married life sequence and mm -hmm. up obviously is like the one that immediately comes to my mind and just the thought of it gets so many people emotional and there's a connection between, you know, you're, I mean, you, in my mind, it's like, oh, if you need a sequence that you're going to build a film upon, Ronnie Del Carmen is the man. And... <laughs> But there's something about so. uh, the personal connection mm -hmm. that I think everyone feels. And I think, you know, in our storytelling, in, in what we're trying to do, that's like where we're trying to start is this personal connection mm -hmm. between the story we're trying to tell. What, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of saying, like, I, I did this thing, I don't know how, but that personal connection, can you talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit, like in, in, in developing a sequence or mm -hmm. telling a story, mm -hmm. like your personal connection to the work? Mm -hmm. I think that's the right phrase for it personal connection because a lot of the times it's there's if there's a mission that you're given when you're in a big production it's kind of asking it to fit into this kind of square mm. it has to do this and it has to do it here and then once they once we organize it that way it's like well obviously you know this is where the emotional low of the movie or this is the emotional high of the movie and that becomes kind of like a project now because it, the first thing that you will do is kind of like do the kind of knee-jerk surface things. Mm -hmm. Make it look and behave like what you said it was going to look and behave like. And for most people in the audiences and will recognize that your first inclinations will we'll probably recognize what that is, but will not feel it. Mm -hmm. They'll see it kind of like and not feel it or not feel that it's authentic. The thing that at least that's helped me over the years is that to understand like what would that character be going through and how will they, well how will that moment happen if they're really going through this? Mm -hmm. And then if I was that person who's going to go through this, what was I going to be doing? Mm -hmm. And then so I have one hat wherein I'm the character and the other hat is I'm also the director and writer wherein I gotta choose how to make myself, if I was the director, present so that I can capture what that's what's going on. I'm almost going to feel like if I was there as a live action mm -hmm. suit, and if let's just say it, it's Carl at the end of the second act of of of, of and um, when we did that, it was an outline that essentially has to happen here. This has to, to be something that we we're gonna do, and then Bob gave me the outline, and then I just kind of ran with it. So I placed myself in that situation, and I placed my father in that situation, who was not well during that time. And it just kind of flowed from that experience, because my dad was very, very ill, and I kind of saw my father at that moment. 
because we have family albums too, mm. then I would visit him in the hospital and I would show him either my sketchbook or my sequences. And so I have something to start with. So the way I move in the sequence as the behavior of my dad, and then also how I move there as the person who's shooting it, this is at least one way I did it, is that I would be very, very careful not to disturb the process of the, of the performer mm -hmm. because they're, so I'm gonna have to kind of like make sure that I don't, I don't cut, mm. I'm gonna go and just like roll this moment, let it happen, and I wanna prepare for it so that my other camera is pointed at Carl in a, in a longer lens, so that whenever all of that is happening, I'm not gonna move the camera, I'm gonna be very quiet and make sure there's not many people around. So how you behave when you're, that's me too, is how I behave towards the subject, mm. shows up in how I present it. Mm. So that sequence kind of like behaves as if like, you're gonna be there with Carl. And you try not to mm. intrude on this moment. Right? So you're going to have to kind of like be careful where you put your camera, mm. right? And there are high moments to it, to it when he starts to recover from and then finds his epiphany. And you change your, your, your tack. And that's just feeling that out. You feel like, well, I, I think that moment over here has started to kind of lighten. He's arrived at a conclusion. Mm. So you change again. So all of those things is kind of like just desires on your mm -hmm. part. You don't know if it's really going to do that or if it's gonna to mean to anything to anybody else. So I try and make that real for me as if I was being with the person who's going through it and then also being the person that's going through it. And hopefully it, it, it kind of connects to audiences. That's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> that's... It's incredible because I feel like, uh, at least for us, we you know we always place ourselves try to place yourself in the character, but you're almost talking about placing yourself in the character, placing yourself in the scene. You actually are shooting the scene as mm -hmm. if it were real, yeah. all in your head, feeling that emotion out through all of it, which totally makes sense. But, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, it, it's it, it, it's it awesome. is. It is. It you. I I would encourage anyone who's doing like animation or doing any kind of storytelling. And because I, I don't like it, because it, it's not my nature, take acting classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Acting classes are excruciating for people who don't want to be actors. Mm -hmm. But you learn a lot of tools by taking an acting class. Mm -hmm. If you take an acting class, you'll be forced into situations where you resist it, you mm -hmm. argue against it. But then if you have a good acting teacher, and, and, and Judith Weston was one, the, uh, I took one of her classes, um, it forced me not only out of my comfort level, but she made me understand what the process of a real actor is. Mm -hmm. That now you know what you're going through as you're handling a scene mm -hmm. and how you're connecting to mm -hmm. another character. And it's absolutely fascinating what you will go through. Take acting classes, take improv classes so that you can be quick and, and be uh, able to be off balance and still be creative. But the acting class allows you to understand that once you actually assume and learn the tools of the actor, it helps you be a great writer, mm -hmm. a good director, mm -hmm. performer. It teaches you to be a little more fearless. Mm -hmm. And also, there's this magical spot wherein if you're actually so in the moment of what's going to happen, where you're telling a story or becoming a character, the world kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. There's just no... I, I've been in, in that one session. Uh, I was in a scene, a long scene, that, that we had uh, rehearsed for. And it was just... It was just not a lot of days. It was like, be on the stage, mm -hmm. perform. And then... There was a point where the audience was laughing and laughing their head off, and it wasn't a funny moment. Mm -hmm. But they were. But the dir the the director is Judas has actually switched the other actor's role mm -hmm. without telling me to keep me even more off balance. Mm -hmm. And everyone else was laughing, but I can almost hear the laughter as if it was happening from mm -hmm. another room. I couldn't feel oh, really? any of them. I was just reacting to the other person in the scene, and I was trying to, I was frustrated mm -hmm. with this other 
person who, who I was trying to explain that, you know, that we were in a, a kitchen scene and I was trying to open the cupboards, imaginary course, and then going through the, 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 the points of, of the moment. And this person was just completely frustrating me. All the while, all the audience members were laughing. And I'm not an actor. And it was like, and after the scene happened, I had this look at everybody, and now I can hear them. They're really, they've been disclosed. So I was like, I said, what's going on? Why are you all just laughing? The director came up to me. He's like, the scene was designed between a husband and wife. Yes. So I told your acting partner to perform it as if she was your mother. Mm. <laughs> so, and they were, the audience was laughing because they, because the director was like, this is a scene between a mother and a son. Mm. But I was let you in that you know Ronnie is going to be performing it differently. So he's going That's to awesome. if he actually understood yeah. what was happening, if he's reacting to the partner, he's just going to react to the moment that was going to be mm -hmm. given by the other actor. So I did not know. So everything I rehearsed wasn't really quite as valid mm. as before. But I was reacting to the what's going on. I was reacting to my mom. Mm. <laughs> that made me understand what the validity of, of those lessons mm -hmm. are for creative people because we are filming uh, the tradition of acting and actors. Yeah, great tools. Awesome. That's great. That's great. I know, acting classes at Tonko House tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sitting across the, the chair and talking to each other. Your eyes are blue. My <laughs> eyes are blue. Your eyes are blue. <laughs> My eyes are blue. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, what's next for you? Uh, I don't know. Actually, I, I, I'd love to, to go on a time machine and mm. find out what I do after all the award seasons. Because That's it kind of, be long. It yeah. kind, of, kind of distorts yeah. the lens a lot. Mm. Absolutely. And you just don't know where the ground is for a little bit, I'm told. It's already at the beginning. And because I like working, I really understand my world when I have something that I'm working towards, when I'm building something, and especially I get that tunnel vision of what you're working on. Uh, I want to recover that. Yeah. But right now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a position at Pixar where they gave me this promotion a while back where I'm, I'm supposed to be helping out other productions. Kind of like if they needed my help, they could just go over there and help out. Mm. So I've been doing that. It's great. It's fun. But I'm not part of the team, so none of the big stress is with me. Mm. But I get to do what I do, and then, then I leave. So far, that's been still the mission, and and I'm I've designed a storytelling class that I beta tested at mm. Pixar. Mm. Cool. It's for everybody who's not a story artist. Everybody who's not at Pixar too. Who, uh, actually, it's just so far <laughs> because I'm beta <laughs> testing with Pixar money. <laughs> Okay. So I got Eric O is one of my Eric Tolles, my yeah. my uh, beta test. He's my guinea pig, mm -hmm. and I had another person. Uh, so there's three of them. Mm -hmm. One of them was the person who was just helping me set it up. She, she's in, in 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 production kind of, mm. and then I made her go through it. <laughs> and all of them were having a great time. So I learned a lot of just like it's six days. So that that was that was enormous. I felt like this is what I was trying to do and uh, you don't need to be drawing with it you, there'll be drawing involved but you don't need to be an artist what I want is for you to be a storyteller mm -hmm. and they were very happy mm -hmm. at the end of it their faces changed their stance with it was a little more relaxed and they're like, because when they started they were like mm -hmm. at the end of six days like they were mm -hmm. So willing and feeling liberated, and I feel like that's I didn't do that. You guys did the work. It was fun. Yeah, I did that. I hope out in other projects in the periphery at Pixar, and kind of like trying to find out how our technology is, you know, um, going to be used for whatever technology is out there is going to be used for storytelling. I love doing that too because it feels like I wonder how else we can turn these things. Mm -hmm. so, Okay, let's find out. I mean, you know, like obviously, uh, you know, I've been pretty close to you, and you know, we went to travel. I know together. we went to Cambodia and Sri Lanka together. That was so awesome. 
You know, we almost we got run out of a public market for drawing. <laughs> That's true. That was that was kind of scary, right? Uh, we danced by the river in Cambodia. We went. We ate tarantula together. We ate. Uh, I tried to actually have Dice eat the act all of the tarantula. He tasted one of the legs. Just he chickened leg. out on me. <laughs> you ate the. I ate body. the big. Bulb of the tarantula. It was kind of mealy and tasty. If you want to, know. the reason why I wanted to bring up was that you know throughout the travel, like you did talk about quite a bit of your own stories. And I, as fans of Ronnie Del Carmen, I think uh, a lot of us are kind of uh, just hoping and waiting for your story to oh, come gosh, to yes, the screen. And I would love that. Yeah, is that yeah. something we can still wish for? You can still wish for it. It'll yeah. help me, definitely. If you, keep, <laughs> if you keep wishing for it, I'm going to want that to happen. Because I, mean, I do want that to happen. There are a lot of incredible stories that you shared with me, that your personal stories. Yes, and yes. Ideas, I know, and, and all of them, really, we weren't even drinking. There was <laughs> some of them were drinking. Yeah. Some of them were just beers. <laughs> yeah. You know, very light beer. Uh, these days, I, you know, being a, uh, a whiskey aficionado, I can get stories out of these guys. <laughs> Bottle of <laughs> you know, Suntory. <laughs> well, again, big congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, having me. Well, yeah. Thanks for coming on so your big party. Yeah, I'm going to come here nice. to the Tonko House and talk about me. <laughs> My head any bigger? <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. Thank so you so much. It's Thank really you. special to Thank catch you. up as well. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I was just like, boy, uh, you guys have been so busy. I've been seeing things online, and I'm like, okay, they're doing that. Oh wait, and they're doing that too. And then they're doing this. Wait, how many parts of the world can we be at the same time? You guys are all over the place. It's like there's at least three of you.